In this video, I want to talk about the TCA cycle, or otherwise known as the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. And basically, they just give a short introduction to it. Well, what is the purpose of the TCA cycle? Basically, it's to make a bunch of NADHs and FADH2s. If you recall, NADH is the re reduced form of NAD+, and FADH2 is the reduced form of FAD. So both of these are carrying electrons. And that is basically, the, that's stored energy. That's reduced electron energy. So now these reduced components are, can then later be sent to the electron transport chain, which we'll talk about in a future video, to be reoxidized. Now the oxidation of these NADHs and these FADH2s is coupled to the phosphorylation of ADP to make, up, to make ATP. That, that process is called oxidative phosphorylation, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, so, but the point is, in order to even get to the transport chain, we need to make a bunch of these first. Um, so these things, essentially, if they, if they are being, if they're, if the oxidation of these two reduced components is being coupled to the production of ATP, then these things must have some sort of AT value, right? They have energy value. They're reduced forms of energy. So how many ATPs is one NADH molecule worth? And how many is one FADH2 worth? Well, the NADH is worth 2.5 ATP, and FADH2 is worth 1.5 ATP. And we'll talk more about why this is in a later video. Why is FADH2 worth less? We'll talk more about that. So where does the TCA cycle even occur? It occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. So where is that? If you think about a mitochondria, you probably have seen this sort of diagram before. The matrix is right in there. Anything that's bound by this inner membrane here. So this thing that I'm sort of highlighting here is the inner membrane. If that's the inner membrane, then this must be the outer membrane. So anything bound by the inner membrane is the matrix or the mitochondrial matrix. Anything in between the two membranes right between the inner, uh, the inner membrane and the outer membrane is called the intermembrane space. And we'll talk more about that later. But the TCA cycle uh, occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. Now, is the TCA cycle, the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle, is it an aerobic or anaerobic pathway? Now, this, this idea, this question sort of sparks some debate sometimes. And the reason why is as follows. The TCA cycle has actually eight steps okay now each of those eight steps of them none of them require oxygen so in that sense it can be considered anaerobic right and the reason why is is none none of the eight steps in the cycle actually use oxygen so in that sense, it's an anaerobic pathway. However, the pathway itself, the TCA cycle, will not run if there is no oxygen available. Okay, so it, in that sense, it is dependent on the availability of oxygen. The cycle itself will not run if there's no if there's no um, oxygen around. And why is that? Just a brief heads up: oxygen is basically what allow it what oxidizes these NADHs and FADH2s back. So if we create a bunch of NADHs and FADH2s, that means we no longer have any NAD pluses or FADs around, right? So um, we need oxygen to reoxidize these things so that this cycle can run. If we have too much NADHs and too many FADH2s, then this process won't even occur. So in that sense, it's an aerobic process. So it really depends on who, how the question is worded or how you're asked. Um, but generally, generally speaking, uh, the TCA cycle is, is considered part of aerobic metabolism. There's a little cloud around aerobic. Okay, but I want you to understand and be familiar with with what the debate is all about. Okay, so now um, before we can actually get the TCA cycle to even start running, 
is we need to have this thing called the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex occur. Now what is this thing? So if you recall from glycolysis we created three carbon pyruvates, right? We created two pyruvates from one glucose. So the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA, which is basically uh, this thing can actually go through the TCA cycle. So let me note that here. This is what goes through the, the TCA cycle. Pyruvate can't. Pyruvate needs to be converted into acetyl-CoA. Essentially, that's this is called this is like the the activation step. We need to activate pyruvate to before it can go to the TCA cycle. So this reaction is catalyzed by pyruvate the, the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. And the reason why it's called a complex is this is actually three different um, sort of enzymes that that you know all work together to get this complex process to work. So um, what, what, what happens here? Notice that in pyruvate and acetyl-CoA we have this methyl group and this carbonyl group, methyl group, carbonyl group, nothing changed there. Um, here though, we had a pyruvate, we had um, this carboxyl group here, and on acetyl group it's gone, and we replaced it with a coenzyme A. So we must have added a CoA and lost the carboxyl group. So we added a coenzyme A, and we lost a carbon dioxide, which is how this became a two carbon molecule, right? We lost that carbon. In addition, this is a dehydrogenase step, right? Which means we must think redox reaction, which we th if we think redox reaction, we think either NAD plus NADH or FAD, FADH2, something happened. Well, what happened here? This carbon here is bound twice to this oxygen, once to this carbon, and then once to this carbon. Over here, the two bonds to carbon are the same, the bond to this carbon is the same. Which means I said these two bonds to oxygen, the, this bond to carbon are the same. But now we have a bond to, to sulfur instead of carbon. Sulfur is a little bit more electronegative than carbon. So if we're creating more bonds to a more electronegative atom, that is an oxidation step. So we're oxidizing pyruvate, something else must have been reduced. And in this case, we actually reduce an NAD plus to make an NADH. Okay. So we added a coenzyme A and NAD plus, and we lost, we we got out an NADH and a CO2. So in addition, there are actually three more cofactors that are involved in this, and those three cofactors are um, TPP, TPP lipoate, and FAD. All of these things are required in order to get this reaction to run. Okay, so once we have this acetyl-CoA, this can go to the TCA cycle. Um, where does this reaction actually occur? This occurs also in the mitochondrial matrix. So once we have this acetyl-CoA in, in the mitochondrial matrix, we can have the TCA cycle going. So that was the introduction. I hope that was helpful, and we'll get into the actual TCA cycle in the next video. Thanks for watching.